Hello, my name is Claire and I'm a member of Park Baptist Church in Great Yarmouth. I'm also a police officer and for the past three and a half years I've been working in a team who deal with victims of modern slavery and human trafficking. And this morning we're going to be looking at issues of justice in relation to this subject. First of all I'm going to bring our Bible reading which is taken from Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through to 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So, modern, tra modern slavery and human trafficking is essentially the exploitation of the most vulnerable people in our communities in order for those exploiting them to make money, lots and lots of money. The issue really does underline the truth that the love and pursuit of, mon of money will generally be at the expense of others and is truly the root of all kinds of evil. Exploiters are mainly members of OCGs and for avid watchers of Line of Duty, you'll already know this stands for organised crime groups. There is a lot of money to be made in the exploitation of human beings and much less risk involved than, for example, dealing in drugs. Although anyone involved in modern slavery and human trafficking will almost always be involved in other forms of criminal activity. This is essentially a tried and tested business model. OCG members do not look at the vulnerable as fellow human beings, but as commodities, sometimes even referred to as horses. The law defined by the Modern Slavery Act 2015 defines human trafficking as where someone arranges or facilitates the travel of another for the purpose of exploitation. And it defines slavery as being slavery, servitude, or forced or compulsory labour. And this also includes those who are forced or coerced into sex work or criminality. As I've already mentioned, the victims are generally the most vulnerable in our communities. They are those who God commands Israel to protect. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18 and into 19, it states, He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the alien, giving him food and clothing, and you are to love those who are aliens. Clearly, all those years ago, this particular groups of people were considered especially vulnerable and needed to be highlighted. Unfortunately, thousands of years later, little has changed. The victims I see are from poor backgrounds, those without family support, and those from other countries here in the UK because they'd hoped for a better life. In Zechariah chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, it is written that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This is what the Lord Almighty says, Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. There is a real problem with this, though, as these victims are generally in a sense hidden, which makes identifying and getting help for them incredibly difficult. When they are identified, many do not necessarily recognise themselves as victims, believing they're where they are due to their own poor choices, or perhaps their situation is just the very best they could hope for. Those who may be party to exploiting others may also have initially been exploited themselves, and over time have moved up the chain of command, so the lines blur as to who is a victim and who is an exploiter. When I am asked how we as Christians can help, and what can, what can we do about issues of modern slavery in our society? I have to be honest, I do struggle. There are certainly no easy answers or quick fix solutions. So what does the Bible have to say about it? Well, actually a heck of a lot. There is so much that talks about the vulnerable and how we should treat them, how we should look to ensure there is justice. We might then assume that justice is at the heart of the matter, but justice springs from love. We cannot provide justice without love. The Bible makes social justice a mandate of faith and a fundamental expression of Christian living. 
Justice means loving our neighbour as ourselves. And this is rooted in the character and nature of God. God is just and loving. So we are called to do justice and to live in love. So how do we go about fulfilling this command? It's like a locked door that requires the right key to open it. And the particular key needed for us to practice godly justice is love. The call to love your neighbour is at the heart of both the Old and the New Testaments. As we heard in our reading, those very well-known verses, in Matthew 22, 37 to 40, he tells us that when Jesus was asked which is the greatest commandment in law, he responded by saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. It's important to highlight at this point that we and our neighbour are essentially the same. Not identical, of course, that would be seriously weird, but we are substantially the same. We have similar needs, dreams, hopes, desires and fears. They are our equals and just like us were made in the image of God. They are his children and have infinite worth, as do we. They are also imperfect, as we too are imperfect. So how do you truly love your neighbour as yourself? I don't know about you, but I get on better with some neighbours than others. There are some that I'm quite happy to spend time talking to and getting to know, and well, there's others I'm far less keen to put an effort with. Our neighbour may not be someone we agree with, may not be somebody we understand or even like, yet we are to love them as ourselves, and that's clearly a challenge. It's even more of a challenge when they are faceless, hidden, unknown. If we want to truly love our neighbours, those we know and those we don't, we need to think about them, consider them, treat them with respect and kindness, and make decisions that will protect them in as much as it is in our power to do so. We can't continue to have an attitude that accepts things as they are and to think there is nothing we can do for people in these situations. One slavery victims may well be hidden, but we can't claim we don't know they exist. It is estimated there are 40 million people trapped within modern slavery today, with one of them, four of them, being a child. 71% are women. And there's a very conservative estimate that there are at least 10,000 potential victims in the UK today. Jesus spent much of his time on earth teaching and modelling for us how we should love others. He also expanded our definition of our neighbour and spent his life redefining who our neighbours are. When asked who is my neighbour, Jesus famously told the story of the Good Samaritan. This well-known parable is about a man beaten and robbed and left at the side of the road. Both the priest and the Levite walked past him and did nothing, no doubt justifying their lack of action to themselves. Maybe they had an important appointment, or maybe they were just worried as, or that they also might be attacked as it was a dangerous road to walk. But then as we know, the Good Samaritan had compassion upon him and took action to help him. Not just that, it cost him. It cost him time and it cost him money. Jesus himself modelled this teaching in the most radical way when he gave up his life on the cross for each one of us. It cost him everything. Whilst we may not have consciously walked by as someone was suffering, have we just not registered the possibility that our actions are perhaps contributing to someone else's suffering? It's easy to justify our lack of action to ourselves. We can tell ourselves that it isn't anything we can do, that it's too great a problem for us to have an effect, that other people are better equipped out there to make a difference than we are. But love is about taking action. It's not enough for us just to not deliberately cause harm to our neighbours. We must be proactive and go out of our way to help them. Whilst it is difficult to address the issues of modern slavery, I do believe there is some action we can take. The Modern Slavery Act 2015 requires companies with a turnover of £36 million or more a year to publish a modern slavery statement. This provides information about what they're doing to detect and prevent modern slavery within their supply chains. Obviously, not all companies have a turnover of that amount, but other companies also publish these statements voluntarily. 
How careful are we that we are not perpetuating modern slavery? Do we check companies we are using are adhering to the relevant legislation? Are we ensuring products we buy come from ethical sources? Or do we look only at the cheapest and easiest options? And don't get me wrong, I've been as guilty as the next person with this. However, ignorance is not an acceptable response when we understand Jesus' call to love others, even those whose names we do not know and whose faces we do not recognise. Jesus himself never set foot out of Israel, and yet his love for the Thai girl forced into the sex industry, or the Romanian boy tricked into taking a job in another country, forced into manual labour, is just as strong as it was for those who sat around his feet to listen to his teaching and break bread around the table with him. This is a very real way that we can practically show our concern for the faceless and nameless victims in 2021, and it might just cost us. Let's think about how we treat those in jobs that serve us. Are we on the lookout for indicators that something might not be quite right? Are we ready to be a voice for potential victims and report the things that we see? What about the foreigner who washes your car? Do we take note of whether they're wearing appropriate footwear, appropriate clothing? Do they look malnourished? Are they clearly in subservience to others? Does the pricing of those services seem particularly cheap? Why would that be? What's their real situation? Do we actually care? I also believe there are some things we can do to prevent modern slavery from happening in the first place. If we change the circumstances for the vulnerable, this will reduce opportunities for those looking to exploit them. Simple maths. We obviously, unfortunately, can't change the situation for every vulnerable person. But we can maybe change it for one or two or more. And in any case, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. I certainly don't have all the answers. But what if, for example, thinking about young people caught up in county lines drug dealing, what if they felt loved, that they belonged, that they had hope for a bright future, that there was an alternative for them? With regard to asylum seekers and migrants who, who do not speak English, lured into taking jobs that exploit them, being made to work long hours, for little or no pay, and living in housing which isn't fit for purpose. What can we do for people in this situation? What about the homeless, who are sometimes taken and forced to work or coerced into a situation where they end up trapped? How could they be better protected? It's time to start thinking about the impact of the services we use, the products we buy, what we can do to protect the vulnerable and help them to be well, less vulnerable, Basically, how can we practically better love our neighbour? Because God is with us and loves us, he gives us a love for others and will help us to do this. As with every aspect of our lives as Christians, we don't do this alone. When we practically take action in obedience to God's call to love, when we use that key to open the door to godly justice, we are not only modelling Jesus, but we get to catch a glimpse of what God's kingdom is like. We pray, may God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's take this opportunity to pray. Father God, thank you that you love us so much. That you care about each and every one of us. Please help us to truly love others as ourselves. Teach us to be good neighbours to those we know and those we don't. Help us to care more deeply for others, to identify the needs of the vulnerable and do our part to help meet them. Help us to consider the actions we take, the services we use, the products we buy and the effect they have on others. Stir in us a keen desire for justice. Help us to see others as you do and to have such love for them that motivates us to action. We pray you would show each of us what action we need to take in light of what we know about modern slavery and human trafficking. We pray that those caught up in slavery would find freedom, that the groups that exploit the vulnerable would be stopped. We pray for the exploited and the exploiter, that you may reveal yourself to them, that they would know you and find hope for a brighter future. We ask this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>